All right, so uh, the first things we'll be talking about is I showed examples of what we're going to end up with. We need to have a, a game plan about how we're going to do this, how we're going to create a mobile app. And don't click on it, but if you notice on the desktop, you should see an icon of Android Studio. Again, don't click on it. Android Studio would be the software that we would use traditionally to build an Android app. Well, that's obvious. That's the Android software to build an Android app. But the purpose of this class is to make cross-platform apps, to make an app that will run on Android phones, iPads, iPhones, Windows phones, Macs, Linux computers, everywhere. So this is not going to cut it. This is great for making only an Android app. I want to give you the knowledge to make an app for every device, to reach as many people as possible. So we're not going to be using Android Studio in this class. Um, let's go to your web browser. Let's go to the website cordova.apache.org cordova.apache.org We're going to use this, Cordova. Mobile apps with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript target multiple <coughs> platforms with one code base, free and open source. This software will allow us to use these familiar technologies to create apps that will then deploy to all the platforms. There are different flavors of this. Perhaps some of you might have heard of its cousin, PhoneGap, PhoneGap.com. If you want to take a quick look there, this is just a different flavor of it. This is Adobe's version of it. Adobe is a big name in the world of graphic design. They're very, very famous for Photoshop. Photoshop. Adobe Photoshop, Dreamweaver, InDesign, Premiere. They're a big name in the world of graphic design and so forth. They have a version of this technology. The core technology is called Cordova. It's an open source project, so it has been branched and evolved by other companies. But the main branch is Cordova. I think. PhoneGap, the, the branding, the name PhoneGap is more famous. You often hear PhoneGap more often, but this is Adobe's version, and we're going to use Cordova, the main version. Later on, we'll see what the differences are here. In short, the Adobe version is also linked to their Adobe Build um, service, which is a way for you to, uh, to create these apps faster, but guess what? It's not free. They give you one free app, but that's only one free app. We're using Cordova, which is completely free for all the platforms, uh, for as many projects as you want. So all the software, all the documentation is all here. Case studies, examples. So it's all here. We'll be referencing this site a lot. This is the manual. We'll be looking at this over and over. Not just yet, though. We're going to cover all of this in month two. We need to start with our basic project, our basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But I'm showing you this in case you want to jump ahead a little bit. This is eventually what we're going to do. And I'm going to be providing you various handouts because, honestly, making apps is hard. I don't want to scare you, but it's hard because there's a lot of coding involved and graphic design and publicizing, and beta testing, and all of that. It's hard, but it's not the hardest thing out there. There's harder things. And so I've got handouts for you, where I've taught this class for years, as I've said. And I've seen it over and over, the mistakes people make. And I've been improving the lessons every semester. And I've got handouts for you, and I test them on Windows, on Mac, on Linux, over and over, on Windows 7, on Windows 10, on Mac OS 10.10, etc. I test it over and over. I do this. I like doing this. And so what I'm getting at is this stuff works with maybe speed bumps here and there, but this works. And so what we need to do before we get to that stuff, we need to create a project. So I'm going to close this, make a note of cordova.apache.org. We'll get to it later. And there's many ways to build an app especially the one we're going to build, which is just HTML. So we've got my preferred coding tool. There's many of them out there. 
I'm going to recommend that in class what we use is open your start menu and search for Notepad++. <coughs> Obviously we've got Windows computers, but if you've got a Mac, you will be able to do this. If you've got a Linux box, you will be able to do this. This is all cross-platform for all the devices. Um, what will vary is perhaps a little bit is the software. There's no Notepad++ for the Mac. For the Mac, you can use Sublime, you can use Brackets, Eclipse, Text Wrangler, etc. On Windows, you can use Brackets, you can use Notepad, you can use Eclipse, you can use Visual Studio, any coding environment. But we're going to use a, a very straightforward, powerful code editor, Notepad++. We've got it built in, not Notepad, Notepad++. How many of you currently have any experience with Notepad++? Okay. More than I thought. How many of you have experience with Eclipse? A few people. Any experience with Visual Studio? Right. Anyone with Sublime? Uh, Text Wrangler? Brackets? So anything will work. B-Y-O-C. Bring your own coding environment. <coughs> so we're going to use Notepad++. Go ahead and click it. You can get, download it for free from notepad++.org whatever it is. And this is the software we're going to use. It's much more no-frills than Eclipse, which is a full-featured environment for testing apps. It's much more no-frills than Visual Studio and, and, and all of that. This is just basically a code editor. Here's your code. Run your code. Edit your code. It's not going to have an emulator built in. It's not going to have a simulator, all of that advanced stuff. So we have Notepad running. I'll go up to the File menu, let's go to File New. We have a blank document, let's go to File Save As. And again, if you have a flash drive, you can plug it in and save your work. But what we're building today will not be so mission critical that if you don't save it, you'll be lost. So whatever we're creating today, I'll give you a copy of. Every time I write my code, I'll give it to you at the end of the day in the network folder. So you'll always have a copy of my works, and my code usually works. So you can take my code if yours doesn't. Let's save our file. I'm going to save it on my flash drive. I'm going to make a folder for this class. And we're going to save this as uh, today's date .html. Make sure the save as type is set to hypertext markup language, HTML. Again, if you don't have any experience in coding, this is our crash course introduction to programming, to coding in HTML. If you have experience, this might be a bit slow, but hopefully you'll learn a thing or two differently, and then we'll get up to speed pretty quick. So here, make sure you're saving this as .html, or else it's not a web project. A web app. So you'll see at the top, I'm saving it to my F drive .html. So did everyone save this document? <coughs> so we can create apps in a variety of languages, as we've said, but we're focusing on HTML, and we're going to use the latest and the greatest version of HTML. HTML has been around since about 1989. So it's 27 years old. Websites, the technology for websites, is about 27 years old. The internet itself is older. It's from the 60s. But websites, about 27 years old. And we're using the latest version of the code. So we're going to use an HTML tags. We're going to mark our document. Kind of like my syllabus here, this could be an HTML document. It's marked at the top that this is bold and centered. It's marked over here that this is a paragraph. It's marked that these are bullet points. HTML, hypertext markup language. It's a language, it's a computer language to mark our document to behave or do something a certain way via tags. And tags in HTML are made with the less than symbol and the greater than symbol. Uh, less than, greater than, open bracket, close bracket, 
So let's type less than exclamation point DOCTYPE uh, space HTML. Doc type. We're saying the type of document we're working with is HTML. And if you are familiar with, if you've been doing web design, web apps for a while, you might remember the old versions of the document type. It was like XHTML slash 1.1 DTD blah 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 blah. It was explaining itself. This is a version of HTML whatever. The latest version is simply this. This means HTML5. The latest and the greatest. On the next line, line 2, we'll type another tag. I'm going to start to use shorthand very quickly because I'm not going to say over and over less than HTML greater than. I'm not going to say the less than and the greater than over and over. I'm going to say tags. When I say a tag, I'm going to say the HTML tag. That's going to mean less than greater than HTML. I'm going to say the doc type tag. Less than greater than doc type. I'm going to say the image tag. The, the code will be less than greater than and in the middle. Press enter a couple of times. My syllabus here has a section that is bold and in the center. Then another section that is on the side. We have to mark between here and here, make it centered. Between here and here, make it to the left. So we have an opening and a closing tag. Start to make it center here, stop to make it center here. Start to make it left here, stop to make it left here. Opening and closing tag tags. Starting and stopping tags. So we need to stop the HTML tag. So let's write the same thing again. But the difference is it's slash HTML. Start my HTML document, end my HTML document with that slash in that place. If you put it anywhere else, it's not right. HTML is a language that on the one hand is very forgiving, but on the other hand it can be strict. And I'll point out the times, of course, when it's strict and when it's forgiving. 99% of the time we will be writing tags to do structure, we will be writing other code, CSS for design and animation, we will be writing JavaScript code for interaction. 99% of the time HTML tags will have a pair start the tag, end the tag. One of the 1% is the doc type. There is no closing doc type. It just starts like that and that's it. Between line 3, back up to line 3 and press tab. This tab is one of the optional things. It's one of the things that doesn't matter because technically you can write HTML in one long line that goes off the edge of your screen. One long line of HTML and the computer will understand it and process it. But one long line of HTML is not understandable by us. I can't read that code to fix my mistakes to change it. So this, breaking it up into multiple lines, that's optional. But we do it for us to be able to read it. This tab is optional because we're going to write another tag. We're going to write the head tag and it has a pair and I've indented it just to show that head is inside of HTML. Eventually we'll write some code in here and I'll indent that. So the indenting is just, the tabbing is just optional for readability. Because when you end up with, with a little small program of 500 lines, and that's a small program because programs are often thousands of lines, so when you've got 500 lines of code to work through, and if you indent things and such, it makes it easier for you to read your own code. <clears throat> After the head tag, let's write the body tag. It has a pair as well. Technically, this is a website. This whole thing that we have here, these very basic tags, define a website. It's like this sheet of paper. The whole sheet of paper is a white sheet of paper, doc type. 
the, uh, the top area up here could be my head section, and the area over here is my body. Uh, so very, very basic structure to make uh, a web project, but it doesn't have anything visual yet. Let's back up to the head section, line 4. We have line numbers, so oftentimes I will, refer, I will be referring to line numbers. So that I say, let's go to line 8, because it's the end of the body tag. And oftentimes what happens, unfortunately, is maybe your code gets out of sync with mine. That's okay. If your body is on line 9 and mine's on line 8, it's probably okay, as long as everything else is there. So if I'm saying go to line 8 and your line 8 looks different, just look around in your area and find your code. So inside the head section, line 4, I'm going to write the title tag, but I'm going to write it like this. So again, less than, title, greater than, I didn't put a space there, less than, slash, title, greater than. The opening or the starting title tag, the ending or closing title tag. Make sure your slash is there at the start of the word. And I wrote title here. Now we're going to mark something visual to be seen. My syllabus has the title, Android App Development Part 1. I want something like that to be visible on screen. So I'm going to say, we'll do this actually. We will uphold the tradition, the very first tradition of uh, when people learn any programming language tradition for decades has been often to first make it say hello world. So we're going to uphold the tradition. We're going to make our website, our web project, say hello world. We've been doing all of this hard work so far, and we haven't done something yet. What have we not done? What if the power goes out? Save it. We haven't saved it. The little disk right here tells you you haven't saved it yet. It's red. You haven't saved. So hit the Save button right there, or go to File, Save, or Control S to save just like any other software. File, <coughs> Save. Or hit that little save icon up there. Or on the keyboard, Control S. Our workflow will be that we're going to write code and then we're going to view the result. This is a fully functional website, a very basic one, but it is a website, a web project. And most of us, even with a lot of experience, can't really think in code yet. We have to see it visually. So now we need to see this in a web browser. We need to have the web, the web browser take our code and process it to actually show it like a website. And the way we do it in Notepad is, Notepad++, we have a run command, run menu, click run, and then we've got the web browsers right here. Launch Firefox, Internet Explorer, Chrome, Safari, pick any one you want. I'm just going to go with Firefox, it's the first one at the top. Any one, doesn't matter. Go to run menu, launch in Firefox. It brings up your browser, and if you wrote your code properly, it should say hello world. Well, I don't see hello world, do you? Yes, you do. It's up on the title. The title of this web project is right there, hello world, in the tab. So writing hello world in the title tag displays up on the tab of the web browser. Let's pause here. Did everyone get Hello World on their, on their screen? Anyone need a little help? It's very easy, of course, to mistype something. Does anyone need a little, little help? So our title tag is displaying Hello World. I want to display something else on the actual screen here that's in body. In body, let's write Android Apps Part 1.
let's write something, Android app Parmel. And let's do our workflow, which is we write our code, we save our code, we run our code. So remember to save. This is, a, this is always a, a little uh, stumbling block for people when we start off. You have to remember to save your work or else it won't be updated. Remember to hit save, go back to run, launch your browser, or, web, or, re, or reload your browser. Usually I go back to run menu. There we go. So I'm seeing Android apps in the actual body of the website. Head section to display content up on the title, for example, and other things. Body to display content in the main body, the main viewport. And we'll learn a lot of terminology as time goes on. But this area is the viewport. Now, most of the time, we will be writing HTML tags to define the structure of our, of our project. Uh, let me make a little segue here. I'm going to, this is optional, but I'm going to, I'm going to be writing notes here and there on another document. You can write notes as well or on paper. I'm going to put my notes in the network folder at the end of the day. So if you don't get these down, you can get them at the end of the day. But I'm going to write some notes. The pillars of our app. HTML, CSS, JavaScript. HTML um, is for the structure of our project. We need to put our structure that there's a section on top here that will be our header. We need to create a section over here for our sidebar. We need to create a section to display pictures. So the structure of, of our project. We will write CSS later for the design or presentation or style, the look of it, the colors the alignment of things, putting a graphic in the center and then putting text below it, or putting a, a drop shadow on a picture. That's our design, our presentation. And we usually use CSS for that. And then we've got JavaScript for interaction. We've got a project where I'm going to click to play a sound, where I'm going to click to uh, save my record to the database. I'm going to uh, speak to it, and it'll take my command. Interaction. Maybe I have a game that I'm going to make, and eventually time runs out. That's interaction as well. It needs to record my score and such. So in short, these three languages, this is why we need all three of these. HTML for the structure, CSS for the design, JavaScript for the interaction. And so, so far, of course, we're writing HTML. I need to mark Android apps because the default looks like this. It looks like plain text. I want it to be big and bold and to stand out. So I should mark this. HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. I should mark how I want this to be different. So we're going to write back up on line 7 and we'll write the h1 tag that's a number 1 not an l h1 and we're gonna start marking there and we're gonna stop marking at the end of the line slash h1 hopefully you've been noticing that with a civilized code editor like notepad plus plus or sublime brackets whatever you get code highlighting if I was writing my code in other kinds of um, uh, software where this isn't here, it makes it harder for me to program. Simply that my code highlights is very useful. If I click my H1 tag, it then highlights its pair. If I click the body tag, it highlighted its pair. HTML, it highlights its pair. 
And on the side, it also shows me a little red line to show the connection. So this is going to be very useful uh, because as we were debugging our code and such, and like, why is, why is this not working? We're going to be looking at our code, and I see a mistake here. Does anyone see a mistake? <clears throat> it looks perfectly good, but I clicked on the HTML tag. I've clicked on the head tag. I've clicked on the body tag. I clicked on the HTML tag. What's different? The other HTML is not highlighting. Oops, I wrote HTM1. HTML. Now it's highlighted. I'm bringing this up because as we get more advanced, more complex, we will get errors. And with a civilized code editor like Notepad++, it will help us debug. It will help us figure out our errors. It's not going to mark it red like you made a mistake, usually. It's going to give you other hints and clues about what you've done right or wrong. And something as basic as it highlighting like this really helps. I made a change here. I need to see my result. I mark this as H1. Let's save it. Let's run it. As you do this over and over, you might want to memorize the keyboard shortcut. Firefox, for example, is the handy Control-Alt-Shift-X, which you can do with one hand if you practice. And the difference is, it still says Android apps, part one. But the difference is now it's big and bold <coughs> and important looking. My previous version looked like this. My new version should look like this. <coughs> We've taken that basic content and then marked it as something else given it a different structure, and now it looks and behaves differently. Let's create a line 8. Like my syllabus, there are parts that stand out. Those are headings. H1 means heading. This is a heading right here, big and bold and important. There's also subheadings. There's a section on course info student learning outcomes, uh, recommended text. These are sections, and each one has its own heading. Heading 1, heading 2, etc. So we've got that top heading. Below that, let's say we will write heading 2. Now that we know what we're about to do, I'll write heading 2. And to make it a little different, let me press, let me type heading 2, <coughs> press enter a couple of times, and end heading 2. Here I'll write um, Tuesday, I will write summer 2016. Save and run that to see the result. You should see another big and bold bit of text, but not as big or bold and or prominent as the first one right there. You may say, well, why did we put heading 2 tags on separate lines where we left heading 1 on, on the same line? This is one of the parts where HTML is forgiving. It doesn't care. The web browser will see your code and process it. It doesn't care if your lines of code are in one or multiple lines. This is what I said earlier. So either or, either one of these works. This would have been the exact same thing if I did this. Don't do this. But if I did this, it's the exact same thing. There it is on multiple lines. There it is on a single line. Same thing. So I just put it there to show you that that can be done. And maybe this is more readable. Maybe this stands out to you faster or easier than on one line. Let's write one more thing, then we'll take a break. Um, next line, line 11. This time we're going to write plain text. We've got big and bold text. We've got plain text. Plain text are paragraphs. Plain old paragraphs. That's a P tag. P tag. And here... Um, 
write instructor Victor Campos. Save and run that. And there's my result so far. A big, bold bit of text, heading one. One slightly smaller, heading two. Plain text, P tag, paragraph. Any general questions so far? Yes. No, this is one of the things that it is forgiving. If I put a capital H1, lowercase h1, still looks the same. Technically, it's wrong, though, because all of our HTML should be in lowercase. But the web browser is forgiving, and you can mix and match cases. Uh, but. 99% of the time, we're going to write everything in lowercase. Let me make a note right here. <clears throat> when we write our HTML and CSS and JavaScript when we get to it 99% uh, of the time, and just redirect. When we write HTML, write in lowercase. The standard that we've got of HTML5 assumes lowercase. Okay, let's take a break. Usually every hour or so we take a short break and then uh, and then we go on. It's 721. We'll take a 10 minute break. We'll be back at 731. I'm going to turn on the printer in case you want to print out the syllabus. And then we'll go on at 730.